Howdy, I'm Matt, and I do believe that we are now live. So, uh, hi, I'm Matt. Welcome to this live unboxing session of not one, not two, but three more RC models. Uh, these ones have been sat here uh, in the corner, and we are going to be unboxing them together in this live session. And one of you in the very near future uh, is going to win uh, one of these models as well. So those of you which are on the live version, thank you very much, Harry Haggis. You can see in the live chat down the left-hand side of your screen uh, what's going on. There's a This is being recorded live, so if you are watching the recorded version, uh, you can leave any ask any questions or comments underneath this video. Or if you're on the live version, underneath this video or to the right-hand side, uh, there's a live chat box you can join in uh, with the chit-chat as we go on. Uh, so a very good morning. Uh, yeah, there's no, Matt only ever drinks his uh, uh, coffee black. Um, is a different topic for a different day. Uh, so mm, you'll see me looking just down there to one side. I've got the laptop running here because the iPad, the live chat doesn't seem to be working on it, unfortunately. So with that said, let's get going. In short, I've got three models sat next to me and I do feel a little bit guilty because these three models have been sat in that corner for a very, very long time, about a month, at least a month before Christmas. And the reality is, is that two of these for sure, I'm gonna get move one of these out of the way. Uh, two of these models are very much, the, the, the best way I've heard these explained or uh, spoken about uh, is that they are a model for life and what uh, a fantastic product or pro like model for for you to own and again one of these uh, again I need to be 100% clear one of these was sent to me as a freebie and as many of you know I don't really like freebies um, and the other one I bought uh, because the other one was being sent to me and the other thought well screw it at the same time fuck it I'm gonna go buy the smaller version um, so the bigger version uh, is the one which is gonna be uh, given away to a lucky subscriber and the smaller one I bought out of my money and that's the one which I'm keeping uh, because it's small and skitty and that's right up my street uh, now what are we what models are we talking about well let's get back to that story they they were described best to me as being uh, a model which could last a lifetime now those of you which are on the live version I dare you to have a guess uh, I will move the box out into the middle uh, so you can have a guess uh, so please do say now I will give you a little bit of a hint uh, which is that it is not F well these two are not FPV the other one uh, is an FPV model these two are not necessarily designed for FPV <coughs> excuse me so I am looking at your uh, comments on there right now uh, so let's have a quick look. Uh, I'm thinking it's the Strix Goblin and the Goblin Mini. Well, here's the thing. I can tell you, it's neither of those. Uh, somebody in the chat earlier on today uh, said, is it a Mini Drac? And I've, I've had a Mini Drac here. So well, it was the first one in the UK uh, when it was released. So if you're anybody willing to guess, please do so in the chat box underneath. And again, you can play along if you're watching the recorded version. Uh, take a guess, hit pause, pop it in the comment section. Uh, and we'll have a look see so I am here I literally have not been all I've done is check taken the packaging labels off uh, and I'm here trying to work out how on earth I'm gonna get in here because uh, they are pretty well packed as you can see and by the way we've got two cameras set up uh, going on you've got the main camera in front uh, which we'll use for the majority of this and we've got the uh, camera above which you can see in the bottom left hand corner so you can see what's going on so I'm gonna have to move these off the desk and I don't know which one's which uh, while I'm doing this, we got on there. Is it a Bushmill? No, it's not a Bushmill model. Uh, it's not even from Hobby King or one of the. You'll have to excuse me, squidging down the desk there to get in there. Uh, we we'll get this open. I don't know which one. This one feels heavier, so I'm going to go with this one. Right. Like I said, I I feel really bad because they've been sat here on the side for absolutely ages. Uh, and it's now coming towards that season, January, February, March, April, those windier months of the year. And uh, they are absolutely stunning models. Now, where did I see the 46 inch version? Uh, that was a, a peak flying with Dave uh, and a, a couple of others. And we were flying up there and I hit Dave's 
46 inch, give you a hint, uh, model. Uh, and I hit it and it went into a flat spin and it span like that. And I thought that was it, Dave's off. Uh, Dan Neal to go and get it uh, and we wouldn't see it again. Uh, but no, he managed to recover it. Has anybody been in Gilead yet? No, it's not a Bixler. Uh, so it's going to go to the box and throw the stuff away. It's going to make a small plane from the box. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you can see the chat going on uh, the right hand side of my screen. Uh, so which model is it? Well, we have, like I said, oh, we are still a bit stuck here, so you have to excuse me. It's the same on this side as well. Aha, that's released the beast. Right. There we go. Right. Which model is it? It is a SAS Wild Thing. And I've got two versions here. Like I said, uh, I've got a bigger 46 inch wing version. Uh, and I've got the smaller 30 inch wing version. Now, um, there's a, again, I'll, I'll put links and stuff in the video description for you. Uh, and so what do they say on here? Uh, the original Wild Thing was the first fully kitted EPP model in the UK back in 1977. It was the most popular model in the first National Combat Championships in 1988, which it won. Uh, many improvements have been made since those early days. Uh, the Wild Thing has been designed to be a good all-round sports model capable of staying up in light lift. Now, actually, I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. I totally agree with that. Um, we were flying slope soaring on Sunday, no, Saturday, uh, literally just gone, and my little flying blade, a tiny little pin cord wing, was really struggling, really struggling. And that thing's super light, uh, and it was really struggling. I kept getting tip stalls and stuff on it. It was just, uh, we needed another five mile an hour wind. However, Dave chucked his wild thing out, same model, chucked it out. Obviously, you couldn't do too much crazy stuff, but it was flying and it was climbing. Uh, so this one is a slope soaring model. So not the typical model which you see me unbox here. We've been very heavily focused towards uh, FPV. And we had a couple of, uh, we had a chit chat a day or two ago uh, about some 3D models. Anyway, get back to the chat. Flying in stronger winds without ballast, uh, satisfying the expert aerobatic pilot, yet docile enough to make an idle trainer. I totally agree with you. These things can be like, on one hand, utterly skits. And then on the other hand, a complete kitten. Oh, and like I said, a model for life. And I genuinely mean this um, because I've seen these things go in the ground repetitively. And we'll have a look at the structure of how they're set up as well. Uh, and they are designed to be extremely robust. They're designed to be combat wings. So uh, anything which um, a novice like me and you potentially uh, could do to it, uh, it's gonna be quite robust to say the least. Uh, let's have a quick back on here. It's cheat, cheat all those goals and more, stabbing itself as a market leader uh, and a position it's maintained ever since totally. Uh, you ask any slope sawer uh, if they have seen or what they think of an SAS world thing and they will ask one. <laughs> and you will get the proof in the pudding. That is why I'm really pleased to not only to be able to give one away uh, as a freebie, and I'll build this kit up myself. Uh, I'll send it anywhere in the world. Again, I don't know uh, what the caveats, what the task is going to be. We'll keep it super simple like we've done in the past. Uh, I'll get this model built up. Uh, we'll get it uh, in the sky and get it trimmed in, uh, and then it'll be given away. Okay, uh, so that will happen in the impending future. At the same time, like I said, this one was given to me for free from uh, Sell Ahead. Uh, let me just get this absolutely right. Uh, saw Ahead Sell Planes. Uh, so thanks, guys, over there. Uh, but inversely, I also have, I've bought myself the smaller 30 inch version uh, because smaller, it won't be able to, it, it needs more uh, wind or heavier, uh, more windier conditions, uh, but it's more skittier. Uh, and that suits me much, much more. Uh, so let me just get back to the chat which we've got going on here. Uh, so Andy Wood looks like he's got it. It was a wild thing. Yeah, TBS wing, hardcore wing. Uh, saying that, I actually finished, um, uh, repaired my um, hardcore 44 earlier. Anyway, top it for a different day. Uh, so yeah, it's the wild thing. And this is a slope soaring wing. Now, those of you which don't know anything about slope, slope soaring, um, it's, I, I wish I knew about it sooner. Uh, and those of you which have slope sword, slope sword before, you know exactly what I'm talking about, which is that you can pretty much fly all day on one battery. It's absolutely nuts and you can have so much fun. And the best thing which I like about 
slope sawing. And it's the key thing about slope sawing is that all the action happens in front of you. And I, I, and I mean in front of you. So if I'm on the slope edge, the action is happening like literally an arm's reach away. You fly in tight and close into the side of the bank. Well, I do anyway, because uh, it's only a very short walk to go and get it. Uh, and it is just so much fun. And all the lift is provided by the wind coming across, hitting the hill or whatever platform you're on, and then coming up, and then that's what provides the lift to the model. Uh, now, uh, obviously it depends where you are in the world. Uh, there's lots and lots of different websites which can help you out with slope soaring sites. I'm sure those fans of you out there uh, which have heard of Sir Andrew Newton uh, will know that his, that's his favorite side of the hobby, well, his biggest side of the hobby, which is slope soaring. He loves slope soaring. And I, I can completely understand why because very little battery is required uh, and you can have a lazy day. And I've sat there, I'll be honest with you, I've sat there in the deck chair, wrapped the plastic sheet on top of me and sat there and just oodled and doodled around and done nothing but just chill out and fly, you know? And you can sit there with no power on the model. So just think how long the LiPo is gonna last you pretty much all day. And you can just stooge around. It's very, very relaxing. Uh, or on a slightly windier day with a more skittier model like we'll see in a moment, it can be a complete handful uh, and you can go bonkers. You can go bonkers and try and take out your mates on the slope or you can go bonkers and fly really close to the slope. Absolutely brilliant. If you've never had the opportunity to go out slope soaring, then it is a whole new dynamic uh, to fly in model RC planes. It's, it's, just like FPV, <laughs> like as how different, uh, so imagine if you fly in a fly, normal flying club uh, and they, they've got the scale models and that's one part of the hobby compared to FPV, which you can be chasing around in trees and things like that. Slope soaring is a whole different genre uh, to one side and it's really, really good fun. Also, like I said back at the beginning, I so wish that I knew about slope soaring beforehand. And the reason being is that because you can get a stupid amount of flight time for literally no battery at all. And it would, it just would have been for me a fantastic learning experience uh, to get hold of the controls and work out what's going on in continuous lift, literally right in front of me. So uh, I am a big foot wild thing. Uh, and so howdy James uh, and howdy Wolfgang as well. Um, I am a big slope swan fan. I've just seen Joe down there and I think she's a, also, uh, was it Joe, right, Joe? No, it's not Lauren. I was actually, sorry, I was looking for the other Joe. Um, I know Joe, one of the uh, recent comment, well, popular commenters on the channel, uh, she's a massive slope swimming fan. So anyway, let's get to have a look at this kit. We'll have a quick nose at the other kit as well, just to see what's in there. Now, do you want to, like I said from the very beginning, I, I need to be 100% clear with you, this one was sent to me uh, as a freebie. And as many of you know, I don't really like doing that. Uh, at all. Uh, so I went on and purchased a smaller one myself and this one, uh, assuming it is the smaller version, which it looks like it is, uh, will be, I'll build it up using all the parts which we've got here. And again, they provide you pretty much everything bar the electronics, which is basically two servos, a back and a receiver uh, to build the kit. Uh, and uh, away we go. And somebody will be the lucky winner of this model. Like I said, I'll build it up and we'll send it anywhere in the world. And again, make sure you subscribe because that will happen shortly at some time in the future. So uh, let's get these parts out. We'll take a look uh, and see what we've got. Uh, and then we'll uh, have a quick nose and try and put this roughly together to see what we else we've got in the box. So, all right. One thing to note is that they haven't skimmed on the parts. Now you can see that on the top camera. So that's decent 3M glass reinforced tape okay I've got some cheaper stuff down there and it's absolutely bloody awful uh, and I've got no idea what that is we'll have a sniff of that in a minute if it's glue uh, and there's a bit of plywood in there as well oh have I opened up the wrong one which one have I opened up I think I've oh hang on <laughs> I've made a complete fuck up uh, this isn't uh, the <laughs> uh, I think I'm right is it no, I've got it mixed up. I've actually inadvertently made a screw up uh, and I've been in opened up the stiffy wing. No, really, I have, look. It's stiffy, I put that around the right way around. 
<laughs> right, the stiffy ring is, uh, <laughs> it is as well. I've just noticed the parts which we've got in there. There's nothing, like, there's nothing quite like doing stuff live, I tell you. Right, the stiffy wing, <laughs> which is made by the, the, the owner uh, of the company, the Seller Head. Uh, let me get this right because I'm terrible with names. Uh, Saw a head sell planes, a SAS. Uh, the, the owner there, Nick. Uh, he also developed uh, an FPV wing, uh, and it's called the stiffy. Uh, and those of you which have been following along over the last uh, couple of weeks, and again, I should have recognised from the fins. The uh, the yes, the, <laughs> the world thing and the, the two world things don't have side fins on the ends anyway. Um, anyway, the Stiffy is an FPV wing. Uh, it was out on beta release, uh, and I did buy this one. I do actually have to pay about forty quid uh, ish for this wing. Um, a short while ago, well, I say short before Christmas, and again, it's been sat here. Uh, this one will not be given away free. Uh, we will take a quick look at the cores we got in there, uh, and we'll have a quick look to see the wing profile. So I am just going to open that up a second. Uh, so actually, one thing which surprised me, and again, I, I know that Dave and Andrew, if, if you're watching um, uh, on the YouTube channel, they've been already got their stiffies up and flying, or seen in the Facebook group. Uh, but if you take a look at that, I'll put that up on the top camera, that's a very, very thin wing cord, uh, which they've got there. And this is Nick's uh, stab at an FPV flying wing. Now, you're going to have to excuse me. I don't even know. I didn't expect this one. It's kind of throwing me off a bit. Um, I might have to get the tape measure out to, to get the, uh, uh, what should we call it, the wing uh, measurements right. There we go. There's nothing quite like getting thrown a cooler full. It's a 36 inch wing because it's 18 inches uh, for each wing cord. Uh, it is going to be an absolute doddle together, uh, put together. You're going to have to clean off the um, uh, wire cut marks on there. There's beautiful black foam. And then, yeah, just look how thin that wing is. Now, there's a curious thing. There's the wing itself. So we'll take a quick look at that and we'll see it's a very thin wing profile. Now the curiosity is, is that Nick has also been and provided a fuselage bay for the model as well. So this is the part where you can, and that explains what that bit of plywood is, is the motor mount for the back, uh, is that that is uh, the main section which you can get your electronicals in there. Uh, so instead of, a, well, I'm still am gonna go and bed those in my wing, now if I put this up onto one side, so you'll see there, again, the beauty of having that camera. Can you see that void which we've got in there? That is a huge, great big void which we can then get our uh, battery pack in there and our electronics in there as well uh, and keep it all entertained or set in the actual middle of the wing. So you'll have to excuse me, that completely caught me off guard. One thing which I will note, and I'll, I'll do it this one rather than uh, the model which you might be owning in a few moments, this is black EPP, uh, and I, I will give it a bash bag. Uh, so I, I will apologize in advance that uh, it's gonna be rather noisy in just a moment. And it's not that noisy, I assure you. Let me get back to your chat a second. Uh, yeah, uh, James, by the way, uh, if you look at James Hurd, if you haven't either look him up on YouTube or look in the Facebook group. There's a link to that in the video description. Uh, James has already got his up. He's been absolutely giving us a stonking. Uh, I know with Dave, uh, with his uh, stiffy wing, which I've just chucked over there, uh, one of his bits of feedback were was that um, it wasn't that um, agile because it's quite a heavy wing. Uh, and I, I've got to be honest with you, uh, with the stiffy wing, I am in very, very much, I'm in a great torment uh, and the reason why I'm in torment with the stiffy wing is because it's made out of, well, you've seen me bash this stuff around, it's black EPP, it is extremely tough. You'll see on the camera up there, I'm gonna ram my fingers down, it is very, and it's black EPP, so it's, it seems to be denser for some reason. Uh, must be the dye which they put in it, um, or the foam which they, the, the original foam which they use. Black EPP seems to always seem to be tougher uh, than white EPP. Again, it's always much harder uh, on the knives themselves and that is a brand new blade which I've put in there literally uh, 10 minutes ago and it's having issues cutting through that foam <laughs> so yeah black EPP very very tough stuff um, so yeah look, coming back to the the, the stiffy sorry that completely caught me uh, completely off guard we'll get one of the other ones up instead uh, is that I'm in great torment because one of the things which 
going back to we were chatting about the uh, world thing, one of the things, the reasons why it's a model for life is because it is so goddamn tough. And the, one of the biggest, well, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of things because it, it's so tough because they use glass fiber, or you get provided glass fiber tape, which is that super stuff packaging stuff which we've got on here. Uh, and that's what you wrap your wings with. Uh, and it's made out of black EPP. So that combination together makes a super tough wing. Uh, and it's very rare that one gets damaged. That's why they're a model for a lifetime, because they just don't break. Uh, and Nick has been taken that and employed that uh, in the stiffy wing. So the stiffy wing we will definitely be seeing uh, at some point in the future. So let's go and get this one open. Uh, howdy Lee as well. Right, we do have a world thing. Apologies, what a complete screw up on my part. Uh, I completely got those mixed up. Uh, and that makes sense because we have the rounded wing tips on one end. So uh, there's not a faff about. We get a decent little manual. I'll put that up on the top. So. Uh, it's all in English, funny enough, not Chinglish, it's English because it was built uh, and designed uh, in the UK. It's a model which has been around for uh, forever in a day. Uh, and again, they give you layouts and the, the different bits which you're supposed to do on it. And I probably should go and have a read of those. Uh, looks like we've got a nice bit of... I'd say that's glass fibre. I want to say that's glass fibre, I might be wrong. Uh, and then we've got the Telltale or most distinctive fuselage section uh, to the actual model itself. Again, this is where you can put, go and put, store your battery in there. Uh, one thing for me, I, I need to, actually, I need to either sort out a 2S Lion pack, which might be, I consider how many Lion batteries I've got here at the moment, uh, might be a, a good idea. Uh, or a Lifey battery pack would be a good choice for this one, rather than a LiPo, which higher C or higher current uh, environment uh, because we're only just dealing with basically two servos and a receiver uh, is that uh, it doesn't require much current at all so there's a molded nose section uh, very nice looking indeed and what else have we got in there it's a chunk of foam down the end uh, and we've got ah that's the center fin which i presume goes that way round left it well yeah is that way round one of those way rounds. Anyway, let's go move those bits out of the way and we will take a look at it. Get it quickly built up. I'm doing my best to try and keep these bits in the boxes. Uh, well, roughly with the boxes so we can put them together. So let's get this one open. I'm just going to get a tape measure out to make sure this is the right one. Uh, so what was it? If it's a 46, we're expecting 23. So this is the one which will be given away shortly. Uh, and oh, look at that beautiful phone. Did you see the difference in the cuts in foam? Can you see how clean that is? The stiffy wing, which I had a few moments ago, uh, that the, you could tell that the wire was really dragged through quite quickly. Uh, and by the way, it's a pre-production kit, so we can't actually say any bad about that. Um, whereas this one, it's all beautifully finished. All I'm gonna need to do is give it a little bit of a light sanding with a sanding block, uh, and we're ready for tape, uh, and off we go. So yeah, beautiful but piece on there. Again, black EPP. Tough as old boobs, uh, and this will be wrapped uh, with tape. So let me remove these two wing cores out of the way, and we'll quickly slip them together. And by the way, don't chuck away the bottoms of the uh, wings because you'll need them uh, when you're putting the parts together. So just quickly put this together on the table or on the bench. There we go. Roughly put together. That is a SAS world thing. Um, and it really is one of those models f which will last a lifetime uh, because uh, what we do is go and get the, we, um, I know Nick sent me shed loads of tape, we'll get that fibre tape, I'll grab because I've got a different one underneath here. If you've never seen this stuff, it's the glass fibre packaging tape, like that, and I've just tried opening it, I couldn't. There you go. And you basically line up the tape on the wings uh, and that's what gives you your strength or cross strength to the wings themselves. They are extremely tough things. Uh, build time, a couple of hours, probably all in. Uh, it's not a terribly complex build uh, by any stretch of the imagination. The servos are, I, I assume, are to be mounted uh, up inside uh, of the model themselves. Uh, and then the surfaces get moved back here. So we move on the top camera, you'll see back here, uh, the actual elevon surfaces, which are 
over there in the box uh, will be back here uh, and then that keeps the servos inside the electronicals or the things which would normally break uh, out of harm's way so that is the 46 inch version i'll tell you what i'll do i'm just going to quickly put those to one side and i'll grab what i hope uh, is the smaller version which is this one down here and this one is for me uh, and i'm really looking forward to this one because it is small uh, and it's skitty uh, and I like small skitty models as many of you can imagine that would be right up my street uh, it does come out with, uh, with the downside that it will require stronger wing conditions than the normal wild thing because that's a 46 inch wingspan whereas this one uh, is only a 30 inch wingspan uh, thus it requires more wind uh, again should be a very straightforward build tape electronicals uh, no motors or anything like that required uh, and off we go. Now I do need to go careful. That was my address. Right, well, let's get this right, open the right way round. Let's have a quick look. Servos go in the wings. Uh, apologies, James. Like I said, I haven't really read the uh, manuals on uh, manual on this one. Uh, so Nick did say there was tons and tons of this tape, and again, it's the decent stuff. It's 3M branded in the middle, uh, and is be similar to the cheaper stuff which I had underneath. And uh, if you look inside of there, I hope that puts that on the camera okay, all those are glass fiber uh, threads in there, which help give the, the actual model itself some strength when you actually put it on the wings themselves. Now, uh, I'm not gonna bother with the other accessories in there. Again, just like before, there is an instruction kit in there which I will take a read of. Uh, the other bits, you've got the fuselage, which I need to pull out. Uh, Elevons, which we've got in there. I might swap those to Bolsa. Not too sure just yet. Uh, and we've got some other bits we get. What else do we get in there? Oh, we get the triangle piece to hold the vertical stabilizer in one piece. We get stickers. Uh, we get decent, and I mean decent. I'll put that up on the camera. Can you see the control horns just there? Those are the decent ones where the screws go all the way through. Uh, so decent quality ones. And it looks like some double-sided tape and some instructions and a little pot of glue uh, for I presume the top wing or for the, the foam itself before you uh, go on and uh, tape it up to help prepare it. Uh, anyway, let's get these open. We'll get in there. I want that one. Remember, don't chuck these wing cords away. You need them uh, for when you're building it so you don't end up inadvertently when you put tape on them, uh, put too much of a bend in them. So let's move those out of the way. Looks like the same, well, very similar fuselage. Right. There we go. So that is the 30 inch SAS world thing. And that's the one which I keep, like I said, this is the one I uh, bought out of my own money for my own abuses. And uh, we were definitely <laughs> uh, being abusing her. Uh, again, really should be a really straightforward build. Uh, probably the most complex thing which I need to do is actually sit down and read the instructions. <laughs> uh, that's probably the comp most complicated thing out of them uh, uh, to do for this wing. And just like before with the bigger version, so I'll put the 30 inch version there. So that one is staying with me. This one, when she's built, uh, we will do a giveaway uh, live, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, this one will be given away, which is the 46 inch version. Now, to be absolutely clear, I would say if you were looking to buy one of these, you would more than likely want the 46 inch SAS, uh, the SES 46 inch wild thing. And the reason why I'm suggesting you go for that one is because it has a bigger wingspan, so that it means that you'll get more lift uh, or more lift in less wind, if that makes sense. So you'll be able to fly in less than ideal uh, flying conditions. And again, that's something which I've seen myself, uh, especially just on Saturday when it was less wind, and even my little flying blade wouldn't keep. I couldn't keep it up. <laughs> Can't believe I'm admitting that. Uh, but it was just down to wingspan. Uh, uh, whereas the world thing could keep in the sky. Uh, and the best words or the best explanation uh, of the of the, the, the SAS wing, and there is a 60 inch version, there's a bigger version of these, uh, is that they are a model for life. And the reason why they're for a model of life is because they are so damn durable. Black EPP, taped up construction, again, there's no laminating with these, it's all sellotape. So uh, you prepare the wings, sellotape the wings up, uh, put the bodies together, glue the wings in, 
then uh, you put more tape on top and then you use as we saw we had red here a few moments ago uh, and then we'll put the red tape on top so no laminating uh, at all all very very simple straightforward construction and crucially those servers as i'm sure you'll you'll be able to see up there the servers will be hidden have we got them in the wings yeah it must be in the other ones uh the servos are up underneath and protected uh, away from damage and again black epp tough as old boots to say the least right uh let's have a quick look at your chat before i go and wrap up so uh let's have a quick look uh, james hood um but cover it with the colored packing tape and it will last years absolutely so i don't know if you know knew this the this tape here this glass reinforced tape if you use it, it's sticky for about a month or so, okay, or maybe a little bit longer, but it will react with the sunlight and it will become, the glue on the back really dries out and it just becomes useless, uh, in short, uh, because it's not UV protected. The decent stuff combined with uh, the packaging tape overlay on the top uh, blocks the UV rays from it uh, and does mean that it will last, literally last a li uh, lifetime. Uh, and again, if you do get any issues with the tape coming away, laminating iron, or just your clothes iron, just get a little bit of heat in there, push it back down again, uh, and that should be all it needs. These models, are uh, they, they don't need laminating, you don't need any skills like that. Uh, it's just all tape, tape, a knife, and a pair of scissors. Uh, a bit of glue and electronics, which you've, I'm sure you've come across before. Uh, so let's have a quick look. Um, let's have a look. James says, it's the baby 30 inch, which is my favorite. James, absolutely. That's the one which I'm looking forward to. Uh, I do have uh, a Weasel XP up there, a copy of it. Uh, and it's by far my favorite model um, because it's small, it's skitty. Uh, it doesn't fly inverted very well. It bobs really heavily inverted. Uh, to the point that um, I, I've mussed around with the CG uh, more times than I can imagine on that one. Uh, to the point it's been grossly tail heavy and it still bobs inverted. It's just the cord. I think it's a Clark Y, uh, which has got flat bottom uh, underneath and it's absolutely terrible inverted. Uh, uh, anyway, so I'm hoping this one is going to be a marked improvement upon that. So we will be looking for some inverted flight, uh, especially with the 30 inch version. The 46 just does everything. But uh, yeah, 30 inch, definitely up my street uh, for it. Uh, so a quick, yes, James is also doing his very good job there for uh, uh, Nick, which is, yes, that that decent take can be found on the SES website. Again, they did provide this model for free because Nick chucked it in and told me afterwards when I bought the Stiffy kit, which is the Stiffy wing, which we saw a few moments ago, uh, and uh, he bundled it in and I would have probably declined it because as many of you know I don't like freebies uh, but it was too late it was already in the mail uh, so the decision has been made we will I well I went on I wanted uh, one of the wild things so I've gone for the smaller one for myself but the 46 inch version uh, we'll get it built up I really do genuinely mean that um, again ask any slope saw what they think of an SAS wild thing and they'll tell you uh, I, well, I'll put it, put it this way I'll be surprised if they don't use the words a model for life uh, in the sentence which they describe it. They're, they fly great, they fly accurately. They can be a little bit docile in lighter to winds, but they will fly in lighter winds. Um, just, a, just a fantastic all round good model uh, in short. Anyway, coming back to the chat. So a quick on there. Yeah, old model, glass fiber sticky tape, but hard in the sunlight, uh, but it's very, very strong. So a quick. Uh, can you get, yeah, you can heat it again. Um, I've seen that done there as well. EP, yes, uh, so Marco, uh, Marco's been, again, you can see in the chat on the left-hand side, Marco's putting there, EPP and tape do not glue very well. EPP has little holes. Absolutely, and I think that's exactly what this little pot of magic down here is, uh, which I think is glue. So I am going to see if we can get that open. And I think it's a glue, which you put on top of the EPP uh, to seal it. So that's what I'm guessing it is. Again, as many of you have seen, I have not read the instructions at all, uh, but we will crank this open, see if we can get it open. I'll try not to cover myself. That's right, that's not twisting off at all, is it? If in doubt, grab a pair of pliers. There we go. I'm sure I come off easy. <laughs> uh, Joe, I've just seen your comment in the bottom. Let's go and get this one open. Oh. Ugh. Oh. Yeah, that's cut. 
I haven't smelt that for years. Uh, there's the glue, by the way. Uh, I'll put that up on the camera. That, to me, is copy decks or something very, very close to it. Uh, so Marco, you, you did bring up a valid point uh, about EPP having holes in it. I believe, that again, I read the instructions, uh, you cover the EPP with copy decks or similar glue, which they've been provided. Uh, that seals off the little holes and that's what helps the tape stick to the wings. Uh, I might be incorrect. Uh, legal sniffer, absolutely. It's a latex, apparently. Uh, yeah, uh, it does... Um, yeah, it, it's, it smells, for those of you which have heard of copy decks before, uh, that rubbery glue, that's just, yeah, it's a latex type glue, so that kind of makes sense. Right, on which note, I am going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up by saying a massive, massive thank you to Nick from Saw Ahead Cell Planes, uh, who did provide uh, this one. <laughs> uh, the SAS Wild Thing. Uh, this is the 46 inch version. Uh, he did provide it for free uh, and I'm going to go on and spend some time, effort and energy. I'm going to get this one built up. Uh, we'll take it out to the slope and give it a bloody good lob uh, and cane its nuts off. Uh, and then one of you lucky ladies or men uh, or other uh, will be the proud owner of this one in the very near foreseeable future. I don't know who will it be and what the competition will be just yet. Uh, I need to get it built first. Also, we had uh, the SAS 30 inch wild thing. Uh, as you can see, it's a much deeper cord. If I put, well, it's gonna be very difficult for you to see. Well, maybe I'll put it like that so you can actually see on there. Yeah, you see the depth of the cord and the length of the wing. This one is, the little 30 inch is much, much uh, deeper cord lengthwise. Uh, whereas the 46 inch is much wider and we had the stiffy wing which is hiding down there too that is uh, or was a beta wing I don't know if Nick's been and released it out publicly yet uh, again Nick will be a massive fan for it um, uh, uh, Lee I'll get to your question in just a moment um, yeah that one was a beta one uh, I've seen Andy's I've seen Nick's the stiffy wing is a very curious one because I might go against the trend with that one uh, and go my own route to try and lighten it up um, and go a slightly different route to what I've seen. I've seen two different implementations of the stiffy wing. I might go my own route. I don't know just yet. As you can see, now I now have, uh, well, to give you an idea of what's on the build bench at the moment, uh, I have an FTC Hunter wing, which needs the stabilizer ripping out of it. Uh, I've got the Purple Richard, uh, the twin motor Skywalker Smart sat over there. I've just finished the DW Shining down there. What else have I got going on? I've got a collection. Oh, give your heads up. Absolute POS. Those of you who remember this fair wing, uh, absolute nightmare. So um, that kind of leads me on to the question, which we had there in, in the chat at the moment. So we are going to go off topic a bit. Um, where was it, Lee? How's the pile of needs fixing, Matt? Uh, Lee, I've actually made a really, really good dent in it, and I had to be really harsh. So I've got a collection of models over there which need to go and get rehomed um, because I'm just not flying them uh, anymore. Uh, unlike, uh, I'm going to use the 30-inch version, for example. I've got uh, a Zack Speed, a Zack Combat, an XP, and I've got a Flying Blade up there. And uh, for me, if we chuck in that one, the 30-inch Wild thing, that's four models, stuff them in the Ikea carrier bag, stomp up the hill, go slope sawing. That is a fantastic combination of models. I'm getting really close to, to having pretty much all the bases covered as far as slope sawings go. Um, and just thinking for you with the, the 40, you're gonna love it. Any of, you, any of you which do slope sawing, you already know it's a fantastic wing. Uh, so coming back to uh, my pile of broken, <laughs> uh, Joe says repair broken crap. Um, I've actually made a really good headway. I've, I've repaired about four models today. I took a break for about uh, 40, 50 minutes and absolutely played through them. And I have made a dent. I am sorting out the collection of things which I do have here. Uh, and some of it is being rehomed uh, to new places. So uh, I'm sure you might see them pop up in the Facebook group at some point uh, in the uh, <laughs> uh, near future. Uh, no, I have not played with that crack uh, yet, Bernie. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go back two episodes uh, and there was a new um, pair of um, 3D models kicking around. But I do have an S back uh, and I do play with that one as frequently as possible, uh, which has not been in the last couple of days because the weather's been absolutely terrible. Uh, so 
Yeah, uh, so come on, uh, Lee, to answer your question, uh, I am working my way through them uh, as we go. And I've actually made a really, really good dent down there. Uh, I've got a mini Drac, a Bonsai wing, a Sonic wing, a Dart, uh, a Genesis, an Edge 540. I've got that HD wing down there, which I need to prep up, get some video footage for you. Oh, and a mini Talon to rebuild. Uh, and then five other models, one, two, three, three more models down on the floor there as well to finish building. So. We're getting there. It's busy days here at the moment. And on that note, if I have been and missed your question, as you can see, I've been studying presenting that there's been lots of questions and chat going on here in the background. Uh, please just ask in the comments section uh, underneath this video or in the video description, uh, there is a link to the Facebook group. So if you'd like to continue the chit chat about these or ask any of the other pilots which have owned these or questions about the SCS world things, please just ask uh, in the Facebook group. Uh, I know there's several of you which have already got these models uh, and I dare, well, ask them if they think if it's a model for life, can, can, how easily can these models be killed? I think the answer is not very easily. So on that note, it is time for me to wrap up. So I am going to say a massive thank you to you for taking the time to watch this live episode. Uh, one of you, Lucky Punters, uh, is going to be the proud owner of an SAS World Thing, 40, excuse me, six inch wing. That is, by the way, out of these two, that would be, if for normal people, I'm class myself as normal. Uh, the normal choice that would be the better choice out of these two because this one will fly in more varied conditions. Whereas for me, I like that flying scar. Uh, that one is going to be right in close against the bank. I expect to be going up and down that bank 30, 40 times uh, in a session, you know, because I'm just going to be taking the pee. That is my kind of model. Whereas this one is. <laughs> Not so nutty. Anyway, it's time for me to go. So uh, I would like to say a massive thank you to you for joining and I will see you again shortly. I'm off. Cheerios.